Hey, what's up guys, Metal 571 here, and this is the Hi-Fi Man Sundara. Disclaimer, out of the way first, this is a review unit from Bloom Audio at bloomaudio.com. They're an online retailer, and uh, once I'm finished with the review, I will be giving it back to them. This is a $349, 37-ohm, 94 decibels per milliwatt sensitivity, 372 gram, open back planar magnetic headphone. And how does it sound? Bass first. So, uh, as always with planers, there is much better extension here than my classic HD650. No mid bass hump, nothing like that. Um, for me, I could hear all the bass all the way down to 30 hertz and below pretty easily on a sine sweep. And some people have had some issues with um, the bass rolling off a little bit on Sundaras. I did not have that problem. Um, this review, I'm also going to be talking about the aforementioned uh, LCD-1 or F4 reviewed. I guess I invented another word, as usual. Uh, and we're going to talk about the Odyssey LCD-1 against the Sundara. So both headphones, I can hear the bass go all the way down to 30 hertz, no problem, on a side sweep with a fixed volume. However, LCD-1 typically measures down shelved a little bit below about 70 hertz, something like that. Um, I wasn't sure if I just wasn't getting a good seal or not. It seems like I was getting a good seal even with my glasses and there still is a little bit of a down shelf toward the very very bottom of LCD-1. It still has better bass extension than the Sennheisers though, just like this does, but this doesn't have that down shelf that Sundara doesn't. But anyway, I didn't, re I didn't actually measure this thing, I'm just going by what I'm hearing and I had all the bass extension I would want here, so not really a problem. Another thing that's very notable about the Sundara's bass is that it's pretty dynamic, um, especially for a planar magnetic headphone, and that is clearly beating the LCD-1, which is not a particularly dynamic headphone in the bass. It has decent bass extension, but it doesn't really slam very much. The Sundara actually does have some slam, and if you give it a kick in the base, it will kick you in the face. Oh my god, am I really coming up with new terms that fast in jokes? I don't know, but I'm gonna keep that in there because it's pretty good at uh, dynamics, at least in my experience there. It might be the planer with the most slam in its price range um, that I'm aware of anyway. All right, now moving on to the mid-range. Um, it's extremely close, actually. To neutral for me, which is really surprising, because every time I've heard one of these things at a can jam, I felt like it was harsh. It was pretty forward around three and a half k. This is not. In fact, it's right where it should be for the upper mids. Um, as I wrote my notes here, maybe the closest I've ever heard from any planer at this price. Uh, to my preference, that includes the LCD one, by the way. This thing, which and my preference is about minus three dB at three and a half k, running on an HD six fifty for reference there. Um, this is less colored sounding than LCD-1 out of the box, too. Um, although it does have a little bit of a 2K dip, but I didn't think it was much. I bumped it up by 2 dB. Um, LCD-1 needs some adjustment at both 2K and 3.5K. Needs some extra 2K and it needs a little less at 3.5K for my preference. So this is slightly better than that. Now, um, as far as detail goes, I think that the LCD-1 is more on par with uh, HD650 mid-range grain and it sounded a little bit aggressive and harsh to me and that kind of can confuse me into thinking it has more grain than it does but after EQ correction it's about on par with the HD650 and mid-range grain. It's not exemplary in grain. Um, so independent of EQ, the Sundara is a little bit ahead of both the 650 and the LCD-1 in the mid-range particularly uh, with grain, which is pretty interesting. I did not quite expect that, but yeah, I mean this was 499 at one point, so it's got to do some things right, you would hope, and uh, thankfully it does. <laughs> uh, recently, I think I talked on some other channels about how the LCD-1 grain was actually worse than the 650. It's not. I double-checked it. Um, with EQ, it's about the same as the Sennheisers. I was just being confused by differences in FR, which is why I liked EQ headphones. Anyway, moving on to the treble here. This has got a little bit of a 7K peak, um, but it's much less severe than I would expect because hi-fi mans tend to be too bright for me, especially around 7K. With this one, I only applied minus 2 at 7K, and I was, I was home free. 
Um, so that was very nice and very unexpected because uh, usually it's um, trouble is not very tolerable for me on a lot of high foamant products like the Aria. Maybe someday I'll get to review that. But with this one, yeah, it's not that bad at all, actually. I think the other only other complaint I had was the air sounded slightly muted uh, above 10K on this, but that's about it. Uh, Detail-wise, however, um, I don't think this is doing significantly better than the 650 in treble resolution, at least not on this unit. Um, so that means it's also behind LCD-1. LCD-1's really unusually good aspect for its price is the treble resolution is out of control. It's outstanding. It's not bright. It's just very, very extended in the um, in the upper region above 10K. It doesn't sound bright or aggressive or harsh to me at all. It's just very detailed. That's just been my impression. And uh, it's hard to find a headphone that's more detailed than the LCD-1 near this price. You really have to be going to near the $1,000 range. It is quite ridiculous. And the Sundara is not at that level in the treble resolution. Now, soundstage wise, again, the LCD-1 loses on soundstage here because of its design where, you know, the, the cups are, the drivers are a lot closer to your ear um, than the Sundara. And so the HC650 and the LCD-1 don't have a very wide stage for an open back. This does have a wider stage than both of them, thankfully. It's not quite as wide as an LCD-2 and definitely not as wide as the HD-800. I checked that as well. Uh, just to give you an idea, but uh, Sundara easily wins there on soundstage width. I think the imaging is very good on both the LCD-1 and the Sundara, but but the Sundara has a little bit less of a center image, at least from what I heard with my usual test track with uh, Yoshi Horikawa's letter. Now, deal breakers, other stuff. This is not an efficient headphone. And anybody who's claiming that this can run off of a phone is probably wrong because I checked it. And you have to be careful. Even though this is a 37 ohm headphone, it's only 94 dB per milliwatt. So actually when I AB'd this against my HD650, it plays at about the same volume. It's not a very efficient headphone uh, because it's fairly insensitive for its impedance. And that's something I have to point out here. Uh, if you're buying this for phone listening, um, I would not really recommend that because you're not going to have a lot of volume headroom. Um, another thing I wanted to mention was, well, of course you saw this coming. Hi-Fi Men build quality is, you know, it feels pretty solid to me. All the pieces on this, I mean, the headband is some really cheap, incredibly imitating form of felt slash fake leather. I don't know what this is. But it's definitely doesn't even feel like soft at all. Like pleather just feels scratchy. It's not great. Uh, the pads are quite comfortable. You know, I didn't really have any problems with those. But they don't seem to last a super long time. I've seen a lot of pictures of pads from hi that so just rip apart slowly and along the seams and then expose the foam inside and you have to replace them. I don't know how long they last for the Sundara. The 4XX had serious problems with pad longevity from what I saw other people experiences um, and something else that was really strange is that uh, if I can even show this on camera the sliders here this is supposed to be all black paint on the metal and it just scratches the crap out of the, the inside when you adjust the headband which you're gonna do especially if you're putting it away to travel somewhere it just scratches like crazy just by just by adjusting the head I was really str I mean <laughs> I have to point that out because it's very strange Although I'd like the I like the metal seemingly wire mesh here going on and it doesn't f just doesn't move around in place or whatever like the 4XX did. So that's good. Um, the materials are good except for the headband, I guess. But yeah, it's 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 still, you know, with the history of this brand, I'm still not 100% sold on the build quality. So that's important um, to note. So also the in classic high five in fashion the cable is awful. <laughs> it holds its shape like crazy and stays in this coiled curly Q thing forever and is really annoying. So I would just throw it out and get a periapt cable probably as soon as you get this headphone if uh, that annoys you because it might. Um, so as a result of all this stuff, I really wouldn't buy these unless you've got a full warranty from a dealer. And the only way to do that is to buy it new. Um, so, and the warranty is only one year, whereas the Odyssey has the classic 
three-year Odyssey warranty, and it's transferable. And the Hi-Fi Men's warranty is not transferable, so be careful uh, buying this used. At least that's what my research told me. If that's incorrect, I'll correct it in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that it's not transferable for the Hi-Fi Men products. So that's something else to note, just some other stuff that you can consider. Now, with that all out of the way, though, I think that if you have a headphone amp already and you're not as concerned about longevity or you're buying this new and, you know, the warranty, whatever, doesn't bother you, then I would actually take this headphone over the LCD-1 overall. I've really been sleeping on this thing. People have been continuously telling me to review this Sandara, review this Sandara, and I'm sorry that I didn't get to it until pretty much the last minute here, but... It's good, and I like it. It doesn't require much EQ, sounds really nice, has decent slam, good resolution. It's it's just a really solid option. Now that it's $349, I mean, that's that's a very, very reasonable price. I think at $499, they were stretching it a bit, which I think was the original MSRP. Now it's $349, and yeah, I struggle not to recommend it. Now, however, like I said, it does not play loud, so if you need something that you can bring with you and run off a laptop or a phone or whatever and still sound incredible, that's the LCD-1, not the Sundara. But as you just saw, there are a number of advantages the Sundara has sound-wise over the LCD-1, so I would take it if you have a headphone amp already. It's, a, it's just a really good product, but uh, I worry about the longevity of this thing and the warranty support for it does not last as long. So there you have it. That's the High Farm and Sundara. Hopefully that helps you make a purchase decision. I'll see you later.